Hey and welcome to this video. I'm Joseph, your Web3 dev, and in this video I will show you how you can build a Lens Influencer wallet tracker. This means that we can see which coins the Lens Influencers are actually buying. And before I explain to you and before I show you how it's built, let me demonstrate the final product. And this is what we have right here. So immediately on load, we're going to trigger uh, and do an API request to the Lens protocol to get the top 25 most followed accounts and list them right here. And once we hit one of these uh, cards right here, we're going to take their wallet address and do an API request using the Morales API to get all the data we need. So let's click this one and you can see that first of all, we're getting the lens stats for this specific account. So the followers, the, the following uh, number, the total collects, total comments, posts, publications, and then the cover image and their profile picture as well. And then using the Morales API, we can get their first transaction, their latest transaction right here, along with all the other transactions they've ever made with this wallet address. So let's click on this one because this one has more transactions and we can see the transaction hash. We can see the timestamp. So when did this transaction actually happened? We can see the label. So they borrowed, they deposited ETH, for example, uh, they made the purchase right here. We can see the sender address and also the to address. And if the to address has a label, for example, this one has USDC, um, DICE stablecoin. So we will be able to display that nicely the same way Etherscan is actually doing it. We can do it as well using the Morales API. And then obviously we want to display the amount we're talking about. And this is a very quick app to build actually using only two APIs, the Lens protocol and the Morales API. We're using Next.js and Tailwind CSS to make this look clean and beautiful as it does. So if you think this is interesting, stay tuned and I will show you exactly how you can build this. All right, let's get straight into it. Let's open terminal in the correct directory where you want to create this application and then run npx create next app. And we're going to use latest right here. We're going to name our application lens wallet tracker. And then we're basically going to choose the exact settings uh, Next.js is providing, but we're not going to use TypeScript. We're going to use ESLint, Tailwind CSS, SRC directory, the app router, and then no on the import alias. Once it's done, let's cd into that uh, folder and then let's install two dependencies, the Apollo client and Morales, and then go ahead and open the project in Visual Studio Code. We can start by going to the SRC, the app folder, and create a new folder, components and create our first file called context.js. So we're going to use context right here. And that will be easier for us to, instead of passing along state variables from component to component, we're going to create context to be able to keep state in a much easier way. So let's save this file and close it down. So for uh, getting the lens profiles, we're going to use this explore profiles endpoint that lens protocol provides us. And this is how one example operation might look like. So we won't need this data. What I have done is I have copied it from here, but we could easily remove, for example, pictures and NFT images or media set because we don't need this data right here because we're not going to display it. So you can easily clean up what I'm going to show you. And I will show you exactly what I mean in just a few seconds. So what we're going to do is create another file right here and call it utils.js. And we're going to paste this code right here. And we're doing three things here, basically. So first we have the API URL right here. So when we declaring our client variable, we're using Apollo client along with the API URL from here to be able to do the request. We have this profile sort criteria. So that means that we can sort the data we're getting back. In our case, we want to sort it by most followers. And then this right here is the query itself we have explore profiles and this is exactly what we saw right here that lens gives us so what i mean is that and you will see this later on as well when we actually do the request and actually displaying the data that we're not using lots of these attributes and key pairs from here this for example being one of them we use this one because we want to display the um, the cover photo we want to display the address of the owner so we use this one as well we obviously use the stats uh, 
object because we want to display all of this data but we don't need this for example and lots of other things what you can eventually do is clean this up a bit or expand the application and display even more data that's totally up to you in this case we're gonna keep it as it is hit save and then we can close this file from here we can open page.js and we can actually remove everything in here because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna put here instead some of the things we're doing right here for example importing different components we haven't created those yet so we will in just a few moments so bear with me we are importing use effect and use state we are importing the context that uh, we just created right here we are creating the variables from the utils file right here and then we're also importing these three components which will which we will create in just a few moments so we declare this home function we have four state variables this lens profile is an empty array we're gonna populate this with all the data about each and every profile that we get back from lens protocol we have this got lens profiles set to false and once we do the request down here and once we set this data from for each and every profile that's when we want to set this to true to be able to control which data is shown and rendered down here and then we have this get wallet transactions which is an empty array as well and then we have this set clicked address which takes the address we click on or the profile we click on it takes that address and stores it within the clicked address uh, empty string to begin with and then we populate this with the correct address so we have this use effect that we render once we load the page and we have this result function so what do we do we use client.query to, to get the data about the lens profiles and we're using these most followers to be able to sort the data we're getting back and once we get the data back we set lens profiles to the response dot data dot explore profiles dot items and we also set got lens profiles to true which means that when this variable is true we're going to render these things down here so first of all let's wrap our application in context provider and pass along these three state variables along with their setter functions to be able to use them in the other components as well then we have this main element right here which contains the header and then when lens profiles got lens profiles is true we're going to render this section right here with the lens profiles along with the get wallet transactions once we click one of the addresses and that's basically it so let's go on and create this header component first and within the components folder let's create a new file called header.js and paste this in so we have a section right here with some styling so we have screen width we have height of 20 we're using flex right here so we want to center uh, both vertically and horizontally we set the background text to white and we just formatted the, the text and everything to to look the way we want it to look and then the text will be lens wallet tracker so hit save close this one and then create another folder which is going to be this one right here the lens profiles so let's go into components again and create a new file lens profiles .js. let's import use context because we want to be able to use the components that we created right here and sent to uh, down to our application and then image from next.js to be able to display images and then the context itself to be able to use and change the values within the state variables so this component is the one that will show the lens profiles here on the left side so what we want to do is to extract the lens profiles and set clicked address function from use context and then when we click one of the addresses or one of the cards right here we want to take this owned by address and set the value to it so what we're going to do is within the return statement is to map through all the lens profiles and for each and every one of them we want to create some sections to display the image first of all so we're going to use um, the lens profile and for each and every item within that array we're going to use pictures and original and url to be able to display that image then the name the handle itself the total followers and the owned by and this is the data we're showing right here so in the other component where we're displaying this so we're going to display much more data but to begin with we are only displaying the name the handle the followers and then the address it's owned by hit save and you can see that we have this on click function on this section right here 
and we run set context function when we click this card and we take the i dot owned by as parameter and then we set the state right here with this wallet address this means that if we try to look what's within this state variable we're going to see this wallet address right here great now we can close this component as well and the next one we're going to create is the get wallet transactions but before we do that let me explain to you what we're going to do inside this component because there are two things we're going to do so we're going to do two api calls the first one is to um, this get chain activity by wallet and this will give us the activity so the first and the latest transactions of this wallet right here and right here and then once we have that data we're also going to, to do a, an api request to the get wallet transactions verbose to get all the rest of the transactions and all the data we want to display along with the transaction hashes the timestamps the value the sender and the to address and along with all the labels that we displayed in this application right here but in order for us to do this api request we need to have our own api key so make sure you go to morales.io uh, to log in let's go to the home page and make sure you log in right here and from here you can go to the correct project and go to web3 apis and from here you can get your api key so once you have that go to your the root folder and create a new file right here called .env.local and in here is where we want to paste in our api key so i'm gonna name this variable for next public morales api key and here is where you can add your api key I just added it i saved the file i'm not going to show you my api key you should keep that to yourself so make sure you do that and let's continue with building this application so the last component we want to create is the get wallet transactions.js and we're going to import a few things here as well so use context use effect use state provided by react image from next morales and the context file as well and then we're going to have a function called get wallet transactions let me spell this correctly like so now let's continue with creating our state variables for this component as well first of all let's import from the context the lens profiles along with the clicked address then we're going to have this morales initialized state variable it's going to be set to false and because we only want to initialize Morales once. And once we have done that, we're gonna set this to true to not run that specific code again if we have already initialized it. We're going to have two variables, the wallet history and wallet transactions. This is gonna be the data we're getting back from Morales. And then we're also gonna have this is data fetch uh, set to false to begin with. And once we have this data right here, we're going to set it to true. So we're going to have a use effect where we initialize Morales and then call the functions that set the data for these two variables. But let's first create these two functions that we will call within the use effect. So the first one is going to be get wallet history and we're gonna use Morales EVM API wallet get wallet active chains, which is this endpoint right here. And we're going to pass along this address right here as a parameter to get the data back and once we get that we're going to set wallet history uh, to this specific data we're getting back and the second function is the get wallet transactions and we're using the evm api transaction dot get wallet transactions verbose which is this one right here to get the data for all the transactions that this wallet has ever done and we're going to pass along uh, the chain which is the ethereum mainnet along with the address as well and once we get the data back we're going to set wallet transactions to this uh, specific array we're getting back let's move on and create the use effect that will call these two functions and there we have it so first of all we have this get wallet data and we're gonna add the try catch in it inside the try we're gonna check if morales initialized is false then we want to start this process and we're going to use this uh, env local variable we just created with our api key and then we're gonna set this variable to true so we won't be running this code again and then we're going to await the get wallet history and get wallet transactions these two um, 
functions right here and once we get that data back we're going to set is data fetch to true uh, so that means down here in the return we're gonna check if this is true then we're going to render the um, the table right here with all the data and this use effect is going to have two dependencies so if morales initialized is change or if clicked address is changing that means that whenever we click one of these cards right here we're gonna have a different owned by address and that's when we got, we're going to do another request right here to get all this data for that specific wallet address. We're almost finished with this component. The only thing left is the return statement. It's quite long, but let's go through it step by step. Let me minimize this uh, part right here to be able to navigate through it. So to the top, we can see that first of all, we are mapping through the lens profiles array. And then we check if the owned by value is the same as the clicked address. That means if this right here is the same as the clicked address, then we're going to display this data so we can get the correct data for the correct account right here. So what do we want to do? Once this is true, we want to display this cover image right here. We want to display the profile image as well. And then the name, the handle, um, the total followers, the total following, the total collects, total comments, total posts, and total publications. Obviously, you can change this. You don't have to display all of this data. You can show less, you can show more. And here I'm formatting it a little bit to make it look nicely. So once we've done that, we want to display two more things. So it's the first and the latest transaction, and then this table right here. So we're checking is data fetch, and do we have a wallet history that is not an empty array? which it is in the beginning, if you remember up here, when we declared it, it was an empty array, the same with wallet transactions. So if it's not an empty array, that means we have a successful uh, request and data from the Morales API. So once is data fetch is true and wallet history isn't an empty array, we're going to render this right here. So we only have our first transaction and we display that. And uh, I'm just again, formatting the timestamp to uh, not show unnecessary data. If we don't have any first transactions, we're going to show no first transaction. And the same for last transactions uh, or last transaction, we're gonna format it the same way. And if we don't have a latest transaction, we're gonna sh show no last transaction, simple as that. So for the last part right here, we have is data fetch and wallet transactions is not an empty array. That's when we want to display this table right here. So we have the table head, transaction hash, timestamp, label, sender to and then the amount it is this part right here that you can see and then we're going to map through all of the transactions if we have any and create a table row for each and every item within that array that means for each and every transaction we're going to have lots of data right here we have the hash we have the timestamp when, when it happened we have the label uh, we have the from address the to address along with the to address label and then the value right here so we're formatting everything to make it look the way we want it to. And this is the final result. So we have the transaction hash right here. And what's cool about this, I, I only display the first like six, eight characters. You can easily make this into a link and link it to Etherscan for users to click and immediately see all the data about this transaction. And then we have the timestamp. We have the label right here, the sender and the to address, along with the label if we have one, and then the value right here. So you can see it's pretty clean and very straight to the point. If I save this file, so we will be able to see all the data, but we need to do one last thing. We're going to go to next.config and replace all of this with this code instead. This means that we allow images to display from these different domains. I've taken three examples right here that I know are being used by the lens addresses, the lens profiles we are getting back. And you can set this to any, or you can remove, for example, Lens Infura, or add a few more. So for example, if we scroll back up here where we display these cover images, you can see that uh, the link will look different. So we need to do different formatting. For example, if we have the uh, IPFS right here, we need to remove the IPFS colon slash slash and add this part instead to be able to display that image. And if we hit save for this, and open our terminal, hit npm run dev. 
open up our browser, we should, when we reload, have this application up and running the way we want it to. So there we have it on load. We get all this data right here. Let's click on this one, for example. And there we have the cover. We have the profile image, the data about their wallet uh, profile on Lens, along with the transactions right here. And if we take another one, for example, let's take Lens Protocol that doesn't have any transactions, we will be able to see uh, that as well. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, smash the like button. That's always appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.